Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In our previous video, we solved this problem using paths. We solved it two ways, okay? One using the regular version, second using the memoirs dynamic programming version i'm kind of compared both to see which one did better and this one did better but but today we're actually going to dive deep and see actually which one is better okay so we have both codes here the unit path one and path two and we're calling both of them so let's just first run and make sure it works okay cool it works they give us three three so python has a function called time it okay oh not python actually it's this google collab so it's called percent sign time it and what it does is it runs whatever function you pass to it 1000 times and picks the best time and shows you how it evaluates time wise okay so i'll show you guys what i'm talking about okay so let's go ahead and run it for three three so when m equals three n equals two this is what happens okay so the first time we call the function which is just the regular unique path one okay it runs in two microseconds however this guy unique path 2 runs in 0.6 micro which is 600 nanoseconds so 0.6 so literally we can say this guy is about four times faster unique path 2 is faster than four times faster than unique path 1 okay. now let's try when m equals 10 and n equals 10 let's try and see what happens okay so we increased m by 3 from 3 to 10 so that's three times we increased n from 2 to 10 that's five times so this guy barely changed okay barely changed just what 20 nanoseconds which is nothing right but for this guy he went from 2 micro to 42 literally to 42 milli so that's literally literally 20 thousand times slower just by this small increase okay we can go ahead and try 20 but i tried it in the past and it took so long so no we're not gonna try it um we're just gonna delete this guy we're not gonna try for 20 okay so now let's step through the code and see what's actually going on um in this case we're gonna step through the memoirs version okay i'm gonna go ahead and paste it okay we'll delete this guy because we want the memoirs guy and this probably doesn't support timing so we're just gonna call the function with a regular print statement okay everything looks good let's go ahead and visualize it okay so again step step okay so two three and two okay so i'm probably gonna skip because there's like eight eight one steps so i'm gonna skip some parts in between but, but, but let's see okay so we define our function define m equals three and equals two we call our function so this is the global scope and this is local scope they both point into the same empty dictionary because we have an empty dictionary we just created memo okay so next we're gonna create the key of that dictionary and keep in mind the green is the line that just executed and the red is the line that's gonna execute next okay so the key is just gonna be a string concatenated of m and n okay so which is what we have here that's a key so we're gonna check in this is key in memo obviously memo is an empty dictionary so nothing's in it so we're just gonna skip this if statement completely next we're gonna check if m equals zero or n equals zero obviously m is three n is two we're gonna skip this if statement also okay then next we we, uh, we checked one and one obviously m is near m and n another one so we're gonna skip that too so we're gonna to go to our else block so now we're gonna calculate our, our memo of key which is just a recursive call so we're gonna have a, a recursive stack of stacking of these functions down to the base case you you'll see what i mean so we're press we're passing we're gonna call m minus one so which is three minus one so unique pass of two and then we're gonna call this which is just you're gonna see some kind of nasty stack okay okay you see it's just stacking the function so you see the function is called here with a key of three and two function is called but again recursively with a key of two and two okay so m is two n is two because there's this m minus one then again he's called again okay we're gonna keep stacking you wanna see so just see all the stack okay one and two okay zero and two okay it just keeps calling for this guy it just keeps subtracting one for this guy okay so i'm just gonna bridge right through here Okay, now it's popping out of the stack because he has reached the base case of where m equals one okay or, or or where m equals zero it's reached the base case so it's just returning zero where m equals one and n equals one returning one so it's just popping out of the stack now so again we're gonna do it a few times for, for both of these guys it's gonna take a while so i'm just gonna bridge right there but keep in mind we're also once we figure it out down to the base case see if m equals one we're adding him to the stack okay 
see n equals one we're adding the base case to the stack so we just i'm sorry i said stack to our dictionary right? empty dictionary so we're starting to populate him once we iterate i'm saying iterate but it's really just a request it's called all the way down to either of our base cases so okay keep doing that keep doing that keep doing that keep doing that okay so we do we've populated him completely and now we're going to return our value of three three by two so bam so that's it for the video guys i hope this was really helpful especially the timing analysis so you guys know that memorization is a lot better than an unmemorized code it saves a lot of time because i believe the timing for this guy i believe he's about since we're saving in a dictionary he's about log n but this guy's just n okay so a linear like we explained in our previous video versus a log log <laughs> but a log function for as n keeps growing okay as n keeps growing the linear function will always outgrow a log function so that's it for the video guys i'll see you in the next one